Welcome back to this new inspirational video. Today I wanted to go on with the next chapter of the book Creative Mind and Success titled Our Conditions Governed by Our Thinking. So by understanding that conditions are brought about through the way we think, we actually are in a position to start working on our conditions and improving some results by simply at first changing our minds about it. We briefly touched upon it in a previous chapter and now we're gonna get into the details of how it is done and why it is so important to work with this if we want to improve our lives. Now Ernest started this out by saying, it is easy for the average person to see how it is that mind can control and to a certain extent govern the functions of the body. Some can even go further than this and see that the body is governed entirely by consciousness. This they can see without much difficulty. But it is not so easy for them to see how it is that thought governs their conditions and decides whether they are to be successes or failures. Here we will stop to ask the question, if our conditions are not controlled by thought, by what then are they controlled? Some will say that conditions are controlled by circumstances, but what are circumstances? Are they cause or are they effect? Of course they are always effect, everything that we see is an effect. An effect is something that follows a cause, and we are dealing with causation only. Effects do not make themselves, but they are held in place by mind, or causation. Now this paragraph right here reminded me of a chapter in The Science of Getting Rich about further using the will, where he pointed out that everything that we see are like past manifestations. That has already happened because of what we thought in the past. And there it was suggested we use our willpower to keep our minds off of imaginative contradictions and physical contradictions. So if currently your conditions are not to your liking, it's best to control your mind to such an extent that they don't control you. Because you're looking at effects. So even though you might not like the conditions you're currently in, you can change them around by having a clear understanding that by building a vision inside your mind, you can build towards a totally new direction with your life and then those effects those conditions will change around and through this practice you will definitely have proof for yourself that what he just said in this book as well is true that we're looking at effects they don't have to control us now he went on to say that if this does not answer your thought begin over again and realize that behind everything that is seen is the silent cause in your life you are that cause there is nothing but mind, and nothing moves except as mind moves it. We have agreed that, while God is love, yet your life is governed absolutely by mind, or law. In our lives of conditions, we are the cause, and nothing moves except as our mind moves it. The activity of our mind is thought. We are always acting because we are always thinking. At all times we are either drawing things to us, or we are pushing them away from us. In the ordinary individual, this process goes on without us ever knowing it consciously, but ignorance of the law will excuse no one from its effects. Now what, someone will say, do you think that I thought failure or wanted to fail? Well, of course not, you would be foolish to think that, but according to the law, which we cannot deny, you must have thought things that would produce failure. Perhaps you thought that failure might come, or in some other way you gave it entrance to your mind. Thinking back over the reason for things, you will find that you are surrounded by a mind or law that casts back at the thinker manifested everything that he thinks. If this were not true, man would not be an individual. Individuality can mean only the ability to think what we want to think. If that thought is to have power in our lives, then there has to be something that will manifest it. Some are limited and bound by law through ignorance. The law is sometimes called karma. It is the law that binds the ignorant and gives freedom to the wise. We live in mind and it can return to us only what we think into it. No matter what we may do, law will always obtain. If we are thinking of ourselves as poor and needy, then mind has no choice but to return what we thought into it. At first this may be hard to realize, but the truth will reveal to the seeker that law could act in no other way. Whatever we think is the pattern and mind is the builder. Jesus, realizing this law, said it is done unto you even as you have believed. Shall we doubt but that this great man showed us that he knew what he was talking about. 
Did he not say, it is done unto you? What a wonderful thought. It is done unto you. Nothing to worry about. With the tremendous grasp of power, of true spiritual thought, Jesus even called forth bread from the ether of life. And at no time did he ever fail to demonstrate that when one knows the truth, he is freed by that knowledge. Now always, if I'm going to be really honest with people, I haven't studied the Bible in great depth. Certain quotations are clearly meant to mean more from a symbolic angle than from a literal fact. So if he's talking about calling forth bread from the ethers of life, well, I personally look at it more from a symbolic point of view than a literal fact. So I don't know if he was talking about it being literal, which is okay if people believe that, but I think there's more power in looking at everything symbolically and understand that you could see bread as ideas, for example. Ideas coming forth from the ether of life in order for you to overcome and improve the conditions you physically face. That seems to make more sense to me. Because after all, I don't think we have ever seen a person ever since that was written or before that that called forth literal food from out of nowhere. So it's just a symbolism that I always consider for myself. And it might help you to understand the words from the Bible a bit better in your own way. Because sometimes it causes confusion when we try to take it literally and we just can't wrap our heads around that. Now all that we've learned in this chapter, because it was already the end, is the main point that our conditions are governed by our thinking. Now at times we're going to face conditions where we won't agree with that. There's stuff happening in the world where we feel like that can't be true or that must not be true or if it is true it almost seems too disturbing to accept that just the way that we just put it. But if we analyze our own lives and the results that we're getting at least we're getting to a place where we realize yes through the way I think I can control the results I'm getting in my own life. And that way you can start improving your own life first and foremost. We want to help other people usually. There's many people out there that have that desire. But in order to help people, we're going to have to help ourselves. It's the same concept that we cannot love somebody else if we don't love ourselves. Because we have to become the instrument of that form of redemption for others first and foremost in our own lives. So that's how you want to analyze your own existence. Is to see the pattern. How your own imagination and thoughts and feelings cause you to create certain conditions in your world and as you become aware of this then you can take more and more control over it and start manifesting some greater and greater things now let's go on to the next chapter it's titled unconscious creation now we started it out the author once attended a patient who was suffering from a large growth she was operated on and about 50 pounds of water were removed in a few days the growth had returned where did it come from? Not from eating or drinking. Neither did it move from one part of the body to another part, as that would not have increased her weight. It must have been created from elements which she took in from the air. It had to come from something, not physically seen. Something appearing from nothing that we see. What we call creation is the same thing. The visible appearing from the invisible. Was not this phenomena a creation? Cases as remarkable as this are occurring every day. We should not deny this fact but try to explain it. In the case of this woman there must have been an activity of thought molded forth into form. Or else how could this growth have appeared? There is nothing manifest but that there is a cause for the manifestation. Investigation proves that behind every condition, whether of body or environment, there has been some thought, conscious or unconscious, which produced that condition. In the case of this woman, the thought was not conscious, but creation is going on all the time. We should realize this and learn how to control it so that there may be created for us the things that we desire and not those that we do not want. Is it any wonder that the Bible says, with all thy getting, get understanding? Now Jesus understood all this and so it was no more effort for him to do what he did than it is for us to breathe or digest our food. He understood and that is all. Because Jesus did understand and did use these great laws with objective consciousness, people thought he must be God. And when today something unusual occurs, people think that a miracle has been performed. Jesus was not God, he was the manifestation of God. And so are all people. As it was written, I say that ye are gods, and every one of you sons of the Most High. A thinking person will be compelled to admit, in view of all this, that creation is first spiritual, 
through mental law and then physical in its manifestation. Man does not really create, he uses creative power that already is. Relatively speaking, he is the creative power in his own life, and so far as his thought goes, there is something that goes with it that has the power to bring forth into manifestation the thing thought of. Hitherto, men have used this creative power in ignorance and so have brought upon themselves all kinds of conditions. But today, hundreds of thousands, or you could say even millions of people, are beginning to use these great laws of their being in a conscious, constructive way. Herein lies the great secret of the new thought movements under their various names and cults and orders. All are using the same law, even though some deny to others the real revelation. We should get into an attitude of mind wherein we should recognize the truth wherever we may find it. The trouble with most of us is that unless we see sugar in a sugar bowl, we think it must be something else. And so we stick to our petty prejudices instead of looking after principles. And that's the end of this chapter, chapter number six. Now, the unconscious creation is just a reminder of the fact that this is where we all start out in life. Unless you were raised by your parents or somebody in your immediate circle that taught you about the mind. We have been using this power all along, unconsciously. But sadly, therefore, we have potentially, and more often than not, directed it towards creating results that we don't really like. As weird and paradoxical as it sounds, if we're faced with something we do not like, usually it takes over our minds to such an extent it's the only thing we focus upon and what's going to happen, what's well, going to keep magnifying within ourselves and then keep manifesting in our world. So it might keep running into the same situation over and over again. This is why people sometimes say, why do I keep meeting these sorts of people that keep betraying maybe their trust? Or why do I keep failing at everything that I try to do? All these things that we might say or that you might hear people say, have something to do with the fact that they haven't properly changed their minds on how they're approaching and working on their dreams to begin with. Because had they done it, after failing at something, they would have found a better way to make stuff happen eventually. And this is what we have to keep in mind. And we don't have to beat ourselves up over it again, that we may have lived like this, just study this sort of material and really apply it, really analyze it and then you'll start to see that stuff can improve for you and actually will improve once you take more and more control over the power of your own thoughts. That's what this book is going to teach us more and more with each and every chapter. If you stumbled upon this video and want to see the rest of this series, be sure to check out the link provided for this playlist in the description box below. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to receive inspirational videos on a regular basis. And with that being said, Dear viewer, never forget that we are the dreamers.